Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I've selected the rice because it is, uh, shall we say, a uh, very important crop, stable crop for uh, for uh, most nations. And cotton because I want to get beyond the, our this uh, this uh, our rice eating countries. I'm going to talk about the rice. Uh, this cotton in China and. Pakistan and India because they are the economic crop. In fact, uh, Pakistan's economy is dependent on cotton and uh, not uh, just only the rice because the rice, because party rice in the northern part of uh, India is okay, but we still have the rice. The biggest rice, uh, this cotton production is from, uh, is from what we call it, uh, India with a limited second is uh, from uh, China and then it's all from uh, Nevertheless, let me uh, discuss as we go along. I've selected uh, this there are only three the only three areas I'm going to discuss about and that is oops, uh, what is integrated pest control? And by the way, it's very unusual because in where I'm teaching, it's usually males. <laughs> but when I come here, it's usually I see a lot of males. It's okay. I'm sorry, I got to get used to the idea that this is a, a female, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, area. Because <laughs> in agriculture, we usually we say it's only males coming. They don't like the females. And I find it very, very difficult to, uh, to tell the people that, yes, there are areas of work that females can do. That is why we are, uh, I, pro, I sort of uh, promote that we have about 60% or 70% females and only 20, uh, 30 to 40% females in our, our course. So I have to talk about first integrated pest management and I will talk about rice implementation and I will do about cotton IPM implementation. So what is IPM? You may have already got an idea of it because it may be taught to you that is IPM is about the integration of chemical and biological. It's not true that in fact this is an oxymoron. In the sense that you cannot integrate two things which have the conflict with each other, the chemical and the biological. And that's one of the reasons why I talk about the rise and IPM. Because the rice IPM introduced to the concept of why we create pest problems and how do we create pest problems? I'll discuss with you. So it's about empowering farmers to become effective managers and decision makers. That is what we are talking about. We want to be able to grow crop with the least disruption of the agro ecosystem. And uh, IBM by farmers, that is the difference in the way we do things. We don't do things for farmers, we do it by farmers. Because if you are able to compete with the farmers, you will be very, very good. Usually, when I work with the, the rice, with the vegetable farmers, for example, it's very difficult. The, the farmer tells me he eat more salt than I eat rice. So it's very difficult to do it. And that's how it is that we, we work with, them, with the farmers and all that. So it's a biological control, and that is my specialty. I specialize in biological control. But not the biological control that the West talk about. It's about biological control in the tropics. So the, one of the biggest challenges for me is to how to tell them that biological control in the top area, you know, where tropics, is about general predators, not specific, and they never search at them, they search for the purpose. That's why insects have antenna, that's why insects have sensitive organs. Why? Because they have built to look for the food. So one of my grandson I developed for the for Utah, I work with my, my, my colleagues, is to look for how, what type of caramels attract that uh, attract the virus toys. And how can we make use of this? That is the next 
generation of research and good. So when I go and teach, it's all about developing the next generation. You gotta look beyond 2050. We had to talk about it because what we have learned in the past remains, should remain in the past, not in the future. Yeah, that's what we are doing now. So it's about farmers' analysis. One of the things you have to recognize is that farmers do research all the time. And the farmers have a way of developing experimental techniques. What we can do now is to help the farmers to understand why they do certain things and why they don't do certain things. It's about human resource development. For a long time, when I joined the, the, the service in the Utah, one of the things that they told me is that we don't want our students to become farmers. I said, we never wanted the students to become farmers. We want our students to become researchers, managers, CEOs, and the like. Because in Malaysia, the biggest crop where we make a lot of money is from the oil palm. We're talking about billions of dollars. So you got to be up. You got to be good in your, in your areas of agriculture if you want to say. First, number one, you must know what is needed to be done by the, the, the workers. Otherwise, you'll be taken for a ride. Anyway. So it's about knowledge management strategy. That's non-formal education. We are so familiar with educating our people. We sit for examination, we have to pass examination, then we get a water work. But here with the farmers, we do not teach them about how to sit for examination. The examination is about production. If they cannot produce the food, they will vanish. So it's about that. So the experimentation, experiential training, uh, this learning methods is the only way they will uh, learn. And as cooperative, they have to work together with other farms. Strong technical uh, basis is part of ecological principles. That is what we have to do. We have topics and we have to understand that the ecology in the topics is different from ecology in the West. There are four seasons. They are putting one of them. One quarter is summer. In the tropics, we have four summers. We like it or not, it's either rain or shine. Finish. That's it. That's our topics. So, what is IPL? It's, it, it, it's, a, it's a, something that has evolved. If we are to develop our methods to approach the, the farmers, we have to understand that the evolution, with the Charles Darwin has stated 200 years ago, is still going on way. And much more when I work with Coco and all that. But I'm not talking about Coco here. Because in my, in my past 40 years of research, I work with Coco, I work with coconut, I work with oil palm, I work with vegetables, everything. That's part of it. Because that's, that's what I respect. respect. I mean, when I work for Kevin International, I work for the Department of Agriculture for Malaysia. And successful IPL programs are based on strong ecological principles. That's why we have developed the course in, in Malaysia. It's all about ecology. How we develop the, the ecological principles. So we have to, we have to work on that. Let me give you, that's one thing is about theory. The next thing you have to go about is about what we have achieved. And the rice, brown brown upper is one of the examples where I do I think from our rice idea. I've been to the attention in a sense that once for a time, books talk about pests. And what are pests that they talk about in Japan is about the rice that was. So therefore they justify the use of chemicals for rice and water. But then in the last 10 years, Japan, the Japanese have realized that they do not want to die young. 
they have a long, they want to have a longer life, and they will enjoy their life. So they stop using insecticides. And what happened? The farmers look around. You don't have rice and anymore. What happened? See, and they have to say, well, for all these years they've been using insecticide with that mistaken impression that they have to use, they have to control the pest, which is non existent. So, Kiritani, one of the famous uh, the, the, this, uh, rice and tomatoes in Japan, concluded that this is a fortuitous integrated pest management in Japan. Not because they found out what has to be done, but rather they stopped using it because they felt that most people do not like to use insects anymore. So, here we go. So that, that's this thing. But let me give you an example. This is what this thing that I work on. This is the research I work on. You are all familiar with this rice crop problem. The little water is. This looks big, but actually it's about 4 to 5 mm. And this is the long wing form. That is a strategy that many people do not know, do not know about. The long wing form is the one that flies into Japan. So what you do is, what you do is to tell the, the, the Japanese uh, the government it's a boomerang effect. The more insecticide you use, the more proper pets are sent back to you. It's very easy. So what you do is, you create it, you build up the proper hopper, and then it goes to Japan. Because they fly, because they're long before. In India, what they do is to screen for insecticide resistance. I mean, sorry, to, to screen for the rice varieties that are resistant to brown brown hopper. They spray the field so that they can get brown brown, brown, brown hopper to test the plant, to test on the plant. Now, what does that mean? It means never underestimate the ignorance of learned people. That is what it's all about. So we have to really go into looking at what is the potential of why the outbreaks happen. This is the food chain. We have the, this adult to eggs and the five stars and then we have adults. This is an incomplete metamorphosis. That's what I tell my students. The strategy is that they have short big forms. They fly into the rock and know the crop is yes, they can last them for at least three weeks to four weeks. Then the young ones develop shopping forms and they can lay eggs. So in fact in 1970s we, we saw the problem and we solved the problem. But we have very short memory. Very, very short memory. We have it again. And the same reason. But instead of solving the we we stay the, uh, the solution, they start doing the same thing that they did in the past, more insecticides. We base adults and needs are all for the base. So we found where they right, where they are. And that's why we cannot detect the damage. We didn't see the population until later on. And most damage is caused by dehydration. Of plant, so brown, the hopper burn, call it hopper burn. But there are actually a lot of factors that will increase of this saturninus millet crop. It depends on the prey population. It's very specific. The brown brown hopper, I see, we have discovered, I mean, at least it's studies and research, in the research in Erie and all the farmland. You cannot find it on any other crop except for rice and related rice crops. So how does it become a pest? Because there's only one host. That is where when I review the card, the, the, the papers, I found that we are actually creating the pest problems. It's a man-made pest. It's a man-made fence. 
human is homo sapiens. So when we spray insecticides, insecticides cause the pest outbreak. So insecticides do not solve problems, they create problems. That is how we decided we have to go into college of the basis for it. This is Guadosa Sudanata. This is the one that fits on the and fits on the proper hub. And where does it fit? It fits near the water level. Why? Because that's where the food is. They never search in London. They know that's where ecological studies come into play. And that's why we need the ecological studies. We choose to ignore it because we want to get the biotech, we want to get the macrolecular, we got everything else except ecology. And we are in an ecological region. There are fire spots. Sometimes by the you can see the black colored ones are the fire stacks names. We are also general practice. We have pseudogonotopus, we have this elanus, and we have the dynes and elanus, subterranean. This is a very unique one. It sterilizes the first part, sterilizes the female. The female cannot produce any more eggs. You can see that the first part stays here, but it fits inside. Inside the, 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 the host, and then the female will not be able to eat anymore. This is both a predator and a parasite. It's an ectoparasite. Right here. Some of these, which I hope some of you all will be interested in. What I did in Indonesia was to bring some of the how to monitor the health of the environment in rice environment by looking at the dragonflies and the flies. That is something. In Myanmar, they can use it to put in the water where they live, the monks can't drink. That's okay. Because it's very clean. It's a, the, but then you eat the mosquitoes. So we do not have the mosquitoes in the rural areas with mosquitoes in the urban areas. And dengue is an urban disease. So you do not get dengue in the rural areas where the rice are grown. Because there they have these dragonflies. The larvae of each fish goes in the water too. And they develop water. And then they feed the larvae of the, of the, of the mosquitoes. If the mosquito larvae develop into pupa, then they fly up, they eat the white the cows. So it's very, very difficult. As you go along, we have one species, but when you look at the list, we have about 170 species to feed on that one poor species. That's why when, for the last 400 years, no outbreaks. It's only recently that we have outbreaks because we use insecticides. They forget all insecticides are poisons. And poison is like bullets. You cannot tell the, uh, the, the bullet, this is my friend, so you can go around it and then hit the uh, direct effect. You can't. There's no way you can do that. It goes through, it kills your friends, it kills your enemies too. The same thing with all insecticides. It kills both the natural enemies and the pests. And it kills the natural enemies because the natural beasts do not have the ability to have to develop resistance. And why do insects, the other herbivores, develop resistance? Because they are built to have to break resistance. They have to break down the chemicals in the plant. So they have enzymes to break down poisons. When they become insecticides, no problem. They become resistant. So you have 500 more species which are resistant. So up to us. We have created our own problems. So what the farmers in the Tamil Islands do? They mix up all important. They mix up to six to ten insecticides 
in one diagnosis and each insecticide is three times to five times the rate they use. They recommend the rate. So we are creating a bigger and bigger problem and the environment suffers. So what do we do? What have we? We actually should really practice how to study ecology. Too many times we ignore ecology. When we have no outbreaks, we are going to ask, why should we learn study something when we have no outbreak? Mistake. Because if we do not study the insects when they have no outbreaks, we will never know, understand why they were kept in the non outbreak situation. Same thing with when we have export because of globalization, we export the fruit flies. But the fruit flies are native to Malaysia or to the South Asian countries. So the recent invasion in evidence is actually the size which came from our local. And so what they do is they send the people from the Hawaii or from Australia and all that to study the natural enemies here. When we could have easily studied here and then tell them that these are the species that you need to to introduce into the country to control the pests. We don't have that. We are also that, you know, the Kosuzala or the Maturism that uh, keeps the population of the pests down. It's a water environment, so you have high humidity. So the fungus, you go to the We have religion, religion, and also Gerudin. We always want to plant there. These things are there. What are they doing there? They're there because they can find food there. They do not waste the time like going to a place where there is no food. Would you? You will not do that. They always look for a place where they can get food. So here I have a sort of a summarize some of the these things. We have the lagosids and we have dryness and we have all the flies. They take away all these natural enemies. Just very, very difficult for the pests to develop unless we as human beings help the pests to develop so that we help the robbers to develop our house. How do we do that? Develop the, 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 the good insects, they can develop bad insects. The bad insects can develop resistance. So that is what we're doing now. It's so difficult. That's why I'm very, very fortunate that you know, Zaka invited me to come and just share this experience with you Because if we do not have the ability to understand what is happening to our environment, we are doomed for to fulfill this. And you are the best parts in this world. We need to help understand our ecology. So when I some we have three different types, the three methods, research methods that we can use. First of all, we go to where we have no use of insecticides. And that is a wonderful thing because we don't have output. Every time the population comes up, it's brought down again. So by the end of the, of the season, it's not great. This is done in Uri, in a disorganized season. When you spray, you get outbreaks. When you don't spray, no outbreaks. What does that mean? Sometimes the evidence is in front of you, but it shows you in order. Because we are already a step, we have in our mindset, we use insecticides regularly. Because we love spending money on insecticides. We have support, we have to support the industry overseas. This is what they use as an exclusion page. Some experiments we do in our few schools. Because we realize that if we have close cage, means we do not allow predators coming, we have problems. So 
between the 50 times to 100 times increase in population. And those guys talk about you know, two times increase in population by using insecticide. You stimulate the hoppers to lay eggs two times more, or you talk 50 to 100 times more, just by the action of the practice. This is an area that we need to be, be sort of. This is an area where we have no insects are used, or where we don't insects are used. And this is a place that used 12 times to 15 times per season. And you see the thing goes up. So the more insects are used, the more outbreaks have. So the start of the outbreak is in the area where like, we have a lot of usage. So it's, it's very difficult for me to work in an area like this because I have to go against the grain. And that makes the difference. And that's why when I finished with the FAO, I came back. I'm already at retirement when they asked me to start the uh, this department of agriculture. Because we have to teach agro-biodiversity to all our students. It's very important. For those who are not into it, they ask a very simple question. But brown brown but only fits on brown on uh, uh, this uh, the spider spit only on the brown brown is it? No, they are generous. So they feed on everything else to keep the purple population intact. They also feed among themselves if there's no food. So that they can survive. Then they say the next uh, the next question they ask is, but then what happens when there's no crop? What happens when they scrub them? Yes. At that time, the only way they could think, think, think about was that there is no food, no pest. But the pest, the insect, the predators like this, they feed on all the flies, they feed on the mosquitoes. So we are very fortunate, we are blessed we have predators. It could be spiders, it could be dragonflies, it could be dancerflies, but they are blessed. That is how rich we are. The saddest thing is, when we are rich, we do not know, do not know that we are rich. That is where we are poor. So we are instead we can spend money. So the same thing with the oil palm industry. Once more time, when we introduce the oil palm into Malaysia, thought it would be a good replacement or complement to rubber. We almost gave it up because the farmers have nothing to do. So they spend a lot of money on insecticides. And when they spend money on a lot of insecticides, they spray out it, they spray DAT, they spray everything on the oil pump. And what they said is up? Outbreak of bad ones. Bad ones are from native farms. So we have got a we have got a scenario. In fact, the first IPM actually was from Southeast Asia. The first branch control was from China. The world. So we have Asia, we are leaders in sustainable agriculture. And yet we choose to ignore it. And that's where I'm here to share it with you the experiences that we have. We have studies to break in periods. So the reason we break periods is so that we can sort of become like the rest. We have distinct generation. So this one, we know that in the topics we have all living generations. We have larvae, we have eggs, we have adults. But we put in periods according to the length of the life cycle. And then we can develop and show that it has, as the number of spiders increase, there's a low population of the pH, which is what we observe in the field. The same thing with the We use the mirror bug, the sedurinus, same thing. 
before I go on, I need to have my water. The reason is that it's my 14th year of cancer. Cheers. <laughs> When I was, a, uh, I was a CTA for this program, it was the biggest IPM program in the world. 12 million people. It can cover six countries, of which Philippines is one of them. So we have three big countries, India, Pakistan, and China. Small countries, Philippines, Vietnam, and Bangladesh. In the past few moments, you have a bunch of control. Right. So, what we did was we, sh we shared that and we know that all my goals. This is what happens when uh, you go into technology. <laughs> I think it's my fault. I just said all this. My apologies. I was so excited to come in with you all. When we have, when we did the cotton, the reason why we did the cotton was because in India, spend about 70% of the insecticides they use are on cotton. That is why we have problem. All the water, ground water, all the water that you, you have in India is contaminated. It's free gift of pesticides. And because we have things like EDT inside, they can last for at least 100 years. We got you can, you can imagine you have water and you have insecticide at the same time. It's free. Every time we spray insecticide, 95% will run off. You only got 5% on the plant. It runs off. So what happens is, eventually, we have no choice. We have to look at the water that's in the ground. And all the ground water is contaminated. So every water, Every Coca-Cola, every Pepsi-Cola you get in India is contaminated. So it's free gift. And because of that, the government of India has to adopt the European standards, which means that 0.001 parts per million of, of the insect cells. So like the insect cells. And that is why one it took six years and they couldn't get the work done. But it took only six months for them to move the, the law into operation. That is why there's so much challenges with us. We have to really go about it. So when I went to Myanmar, 
to look at the, big, the recent outbreaks of the uh, of the this rice crop problem. The same problem. I said we have solved the problem in the seventies. Yet we are having the same issue in you use insecticide, and that is what caused all the breaks of all the outbreaks. So the farmers here have to learn about natural enemies. All we do is just that's why we have to go back. Even this farm up here, lady farm, because the man has to go out and work as like a construction worker or something like that, and the women are left behind and they have to do work. And so he started learning about things like this lady baby. For the first time, we give her the other half of the book. For too long, we give only one part of the book, and that is the book on what? of the past but not by natural enemies. So we had to give the other half of it. And that is what happens. We have to be able to be very happy about it. So the farmers learn new management skills. And many of these skills can be applied in many aspects of life. And this is ecosystem analysis. And that's something that we have to do. For field observations, ecosystem drawing to presentation. These are all part and parcel of the learning process. Farmer education is something that we have developed. Not because we want to develop, because we didn't realize we may know about it, but how do the farmers know about it? And some cases I always tell people, we may have a PhD, the farmers have two years of education, primary education, primary school education. And you expect two years of primary school education to be a PhD, same level as PhD. How? You know? Because we, we took so long to come out to be a PhD. And yet, we expect the farmers who have two, two years primary school education to be the same level as the researchers. How to do that? We have to educate the farmers instead. We have to show them why rice varieties, different rice varieties, or different cotton varieties are better. And they always talk about, you know, we have dress up very nicely. Look at how they dress up to spray in India. And the, the, the audacity of the whole uh, industry is that we have already told them to wear clothes because they to protect them. Then what the farmers tell the, the, the industry is that why don't you Get the clothes, you wait and stand in the sun for five minutes and see whether you survive. It's very likely to get sunstroke. Because we are in the hot tropics. Nobody will burn the water when a space suit go on this and do a in the spring. It's not possible, it's not likely. And then these are all the insecticides, the, the waters. And you go to see the farmers. They are very proud to show you all the pots they have, all the insecticides they have carried in the in the in the pot. We we just don't talk only about the need, about the need, about the ecology. We also talk about social development. How we got to work together. And there's many of us learn that an FFS can be had absolutely there. Season the uh, long training experience for 25 to 30 farmers helps in the setup of the studies that support us. Which means that farmers do experiments. So this is experiment by farmers. We have conventional and we have really cotton. So one time Monsanto just told me that was Sunday you become very our biggest promoter of really cotton. I said yes. 
He will repeat. Oh, sorry. He will look at this. They always give up IPM. They do traditional research, and that is yes, we have the collect the PT cotton, and no, there's no PT cotton, and therefore we do a D test. Or simple, sometimes use and work. But they do not include the fact that farmer knowledge is important. So we found that if we have both IPM and we have no pesticides, the one with IPM is much better, a higher return. So we can go on with this thing because farmers are already doing research and they are willing to do research and they become partners to researchers and that's very important we have introduced a new category whereby farmers become partners with us we have introduced weeds this is a uh, it's a lot more, more women so it's understandable it's easy this is in the Philippines and the women, they know that the crops, some of the weeds, so-called weeds, are actually medicinal plants. For the men don't care, they just use herbicides. But actually, they are. So what they do is, we have to help them to understand that when do they need to use herbicides. This right here. We use oh, sorry. Once we have what we call it uh, this the uh, weedy and weed free. And we at the cross we have a special time whereby we know we need to use this critical period. Okay? So that is a good period that we can work on. And we know what date, what date, how, how long does it take for the, 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 the herbicide to work and how, whether the weeds will then affect the, if not the weeds will then affect the crop. Whatever it is we do in IPF, we still need to have impact. So the cotton IPM was an area where you can use a impact of cotton. So FMS service and the non FMS service and the cotton for our village control. The village control is 20 kilometers away. And they all we have to interview them and see that they have the similar condition. For example, they must have the same type of varieties. They must have the same yield or at least similar yield. And then we see. For FMS service, the 33% increase in yield or in profit is depends on less use of pesticides. So we, we realize that we cannot work alone. We must work with the economies. For most of the people in research, it's yes and no. So this variety is better than that variety because we only have one to compare. But here we are talking about the chances of the farmers learning more, providing more information is there. So this is uh, $192 US per hectare. This is taken from uh, the rate of use. Average result size is 1,197. And this impact on use. So all this is a pre-FFS, as an FFS here, and a post-FFS. We monitor all this. That's how it comes. So it's a very, shall we say, long-term study. And that is only allowed when you have a 12 million euro project. It allows us to study all these things. Best definition, natural enemies, and decision making. This is all done by Pakistan farmers. 
So some of the data is taken from by different different countries. Again, I have 90 hours. We do not like results like this. Because if you look at it here, this is a starting point. Here is a different starting point. So usually we prefer to have one starting point. But it's very difficult for observation, experimentation, and a good degree. As compared to the, when we have a same point of study. That is, to me, one of the problems we have with in the studies. There's no real, we cannot say that we have full proof of the sort of situation whereby we must understand what is going on in the field. We must do a survey of the top farmers. We must understand how the farmers work. Similarly as membership, the attitude towards gender equity. Very difficult for us to access this information. <coughs> Social recognition. Of course, FFS was most of our FFS was in Indonesia, for example. All became farm leaders. All politicians. The top people. So, in global practices, observe biodiversity and attitude towards, towards the environment. It's not to be both very nevertheless. That is how we move from farm food skill forward. First of all, we have an impact assessment. We include weeds. We have a procedure to monitor all the different. Reduction cost. We know when it comes to diffusion, it's easy. That's why everybody takes it in the easy way of use insect cell, don't use insect cell. They okay, find easy. But actually, we do the rest of the, of the, of the studies. Our knowledge increase, about gross uh, margin increase, yield increase, and we know that. Yes. The diffusion starts with. Top part. Because the farmer talks to the next one. Did you use insecticide? No, okay. You don't use insecticide. To me, please. So that is a study that we need economists to come in help us. Oh, sorry, this is really deep. I want to explain further on this one. And that is. Farm field school is about empowerment. That's the difference. And that's adoption of strategic practices and trade awareness in terms of what must be here. So we have evolved from the last media to the farm field school. People say that it's very expensive. Since when has education been cheap? You know how much it costs to bring you out here to, in, in, the, in, the, in the university? It's a lot. A lot of money, but we did. So don't you think the farmers deserve some education? We have to help the farmers understand it. Otherwise, we tell them something and they do something else. They continue going back because if they have no evidence that it's really working, they're not going to support you. These are some references. Even to have more, this is the lit. This is my latest book. It's published by Kevi. And this is about analysis of experience in Indonesia. The impact studies is produced in the Hanawa University. And this is the other book. If you want to have any of this in PDF, I have to. Or you can just back to me and then I'll send you. That is some the results. And we should thank you very much for all this. Thank you very much, Dr. Wei, for that very insightful presentation regarding IP education. It's nice and important. At this point, we now open the floor for our audience to give your uh, clarifications, comments, or suggestions regarding the topic of the presentation.
this is the most exciting part of my presentation. <laughs> and that is getting feedback from you. Because I don't know what you really have up, what you have in mind. I'm sorry if you feel as if you have been threatened. But let's face it, we have to move forward. You cannot afford to look backwards. So the best thing is for you all. Do you all agree or disagree? If you disagree, why? If you agree, why? And you need clarification? Yes, I'll be very, very, very willing.
no bottles of beer, empty bottles of meat, and then sold out there. And it's all bleeding the, mos the mosquitoes. So we have just have to do that. That's all. So that it involves, what I mean is, it involves us, the dim part, the dim, the destiny in our own hands. We just decide if we just leave it alone, and it's, for example, you think that the government is supposed to do the job? It's wrong. It cannot be done. It's not about resistance in the BPH. It's all about the killing of natural enemies. I hope that has been answered. But as I said to you, it's close to my heart because that's the sub things that, that earned my, me my PhD. Can we give Dr. 